Welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates and welcome back. This is our second video in the series of videos that focuses on how to use the data that you collect from Google Forms, how to download that data into Excel, and how to do some statistical analysis on that data. This particular video focuses on pivot tables. So in the first video we saw that we collected a bunch of data using a Google Form we downloaded that data as an Excel document, saved it on our computer, and we updated some of the names of our fields so that they were much smaller and more concise and easy for us to understand. And we had things like gender, the number of hours a person spends studying, their age group, what they got on the final, what they got on the project, how they felt in the beginning of the class, which was a ranking, one is the worst and five is the best, how they felt at the end of the class, and whether their parents or one of their parents attended college or not. And so we have our data here, and we also learned in the last video that we can sort any one of these columns of data if we want to organize um, by, let's say, gender or organize by whether their parent went to college or so on. Now, a pivot table is a great way to reorganize data so that you can take a very quick look at relationships between data. You can compare data. And when you see those relationships, they'll give you ideas of, hey, maybe I want to run a hypothesis test here to see if that difference is actually significant. So this video focuses on pivot tables, but the next video will focus on hypothesis testing. All right, so in this particular case, if I want to create a pivot table for this data, I go to Insert. I choose Pivot Table. And a box pops up and says, what's the range? In other words, where's all of your data for this pivot table? Now, this is happening very nicely for me because I've made sure that I'm following all the rules of pivot tables. For example, and let me move this out of the way for a second, Excel knows that my data is all here. All my fields are singular. There are no extra columns or spaces anywhere. All of my data is filled in. So if you have your data set up like this and ready to go, Excel will find exactly where all of your data is automatically. If you have any trouble at this point, it's likely because you have an extra column somewhere that's empty or you have empty cells. So you definitely want to make sure that all of your columns are named and all of your cells are filled with data. And when you do that, it will find out exactly where your data is. Our data lives from A1, which is that first cell, all the way down to H36, which you can't see here. I also want to put and work on the pivot tables in a new worksheet. So I'm going to leave that checked, and I'm going to click OK. It opens a new sheet at the bottom of Excel, and I can go back to where the data was as well. The data is still over here in Sheet 1. And in sheet three is where I can play with my pivot tables and make different tables and check out the data. Okay, so in this particular case, it automatically creates a list for me of all of the different variables that I have, all of my columns. I had a gender column, an hour studied, an age column, final exam, and so on. Now from here, the biggest problem or maybe challenge of a pivot table is what is it that you're trying to see from your data? What are you trying to compare? And so you can actually just move things around until it creates what it is you're looking for. Well, let's start out with something pretty straightforward. Let's start with gender. If I click on gender, it automatically knows that I have females and I have males. Now, I haven't told it what I want to compare with gender yet, so it just gets me started with this information. Notice all that because I clicked gender, it places the gender in automatically in the rows. So my first row is going to be female, my second row is male. What if I don't want my genders to be in rows? What if I want them to be in columns? I can actually drag and drop gender over to the columns option here, and it switches my females to be the first column and my males to be the second, and it always keeps a running total. So what's great about pivot tables is you have full control over what the table looks like simply by dragging and dropping the variables. All right, well, I'm wondering if males and females did differently on the final exam. I'm curious about that. When I check final exam, it automatically puts it in the values option. 
and by default, it sums up all the final exam scores. But I don't really want a sum. A sum isn't telling me the information I'm looking for. What I want is to change the value of that field to an average. And you'll see that you have many, many options here depending on the goal of your pivot table. If I change it to average and click OK, it shows me the average female final exam score, which is about 87 and a half, and the average male, which is 58.7. To me, this seems like a significant difference, and so I'm going to run a t-test later in another how-to video to see whether this difference is in fact significant as it appears. Maybe now I'm also wondering about the project, because it seems like there is a difference between male and female with final exam. So if I check the project here, it continues building this pivot table for me, but it always gives me the default, which is the sum. Again, I don't want the sum. And notice that it put the project score here in the values area. The values area is what fills in your table. The rows area in this case is my gender. Here's row one and row two. And I have my values in the columns, final exam score, project score. All right, well, I don't want a sum here, so I'm going to click value field setting and change this to average again. Hmm. Again, I can see that the female project score is higher than the male project score. So again, as an instructor, this is going to encourage me to maybe do some significance testing to see if there is a significant difference going on here. Now, one of the things that's interesting is you can move many things around, and you can also start over. So I can just pull all of these back, just drag and drop, and now I'm blank again. All right, maybe in this case I'm curious about hours studied. If I click hours studied, it just tells me the total hours studied. That's really not information. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm kind of curious about the relationship between maybe age and hours studied. Notice when I click them, they just go right here to values, but that's not really what I'm looking for. I can move my age over to the rows. Now automatically it lists all of the different people in my data set by age, and it shows me how many hours those people have studied. Well, this is interesting because it's sorted. Notice that there seems to be a correlation between age and hours studied. As we increase in age, we seem, at least to some extent, to increase in hours studied. So this might encourage me to do a correlation on hours studied as well with respect to age. So that's just another example of a pivot table that you can include. Okay, let's get rid of these. Maybe I'm curious now about how my students felt in the beginning of class versus how they felt at the end of class. And I'm also curious if there's a difference between gender. All right, well, this isn't exactly what I'm looking for, but it's a start. Again, I don't necessarily want the sum. I think, again, I would like to have the average. And it always depends on just what it is you're looking for. And I think I'd like the average for the ending as well. And remember, the closer the value is to 1, the worse the student felt. The closer the value is to five, the better the student felt. So this is interesting now as well. It shows that in the beginning of class, and here's my totals, my students were nervous, clearly not feeling that great about statistics. But at the end of class, there was a significant change, so significant that I might be interested in running a paired data t-test to see if there was, in fact, a truly significant difference between how students felt in the start of class and how they feel at the end. So using the pivot table can allow you to just click through all the different types of data you have, move things around from columns to rows, look at the different values, and evaluate your data. Now, pivot tables are incredibly powerful, and there's so much more that they could do. This is just an introductory how-to video of how to get started with pivot tables. Our next video is going to focus on hypothesis testing using the t-test. So thanks for joining me.